Hi friends, welcome to my December TBR. It is mostly a cloak and dagger Christmas TBR, but I do have a handful of other books. You might call this, as Kazen from Always Doing says, a pile of possibilities because this is going to be an overly ambitious TBR. So these, these are the books that I hope to read, uh, the books that I will be choosing from. So I'm going to start first with just the Cloak and Dagger Christmas TBR and then I'll, I'll move on to the other books. So the kind of theme for the prompts for Cloak and Dagger Christmas this year are uh, the rooms of the house from the, the, the movie and the game Clue. I'm not going to try to satisfy all nine prompts, but I think I have four here that I should be able to bang out. So for the library, a book about books or a book that you borrow from the library, I am finally hopefully going to get to The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield. So as I understand, this is about a writer, a female writer, who basically wants her story to be told. And so she hires this uh, other young woman writer to to write her story, basically. And I think there's a lot of... Um, you're not sure what's fact or fiction. Um, and I think there's there's been a lot of mystery around her and what's true about her in the past. Um, and I believe that continues on. So, you know, booktube darling. A lot of people love Diane Setterfield in this bu book in general. Um, this would also satisfy um, The Hall, which would be a new to me author. I have never read Diane Setterfield before, um, so she would be new to me. For the billiards room, we have next in a series or a book about uh, a game or sports. So I'm going to go with next in a series. I have Agatha Raisin and the Potted Gardener. I actually accidentally have two different copies of this. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll pick them up when I'm in a used bookstore and particularly because they have different covers. Uh, I didn't realize that I bought the same book twice. Um, I'm going to go with this edition purely because it's a little bit bigger and I like the like the page formatting better than the other book. And so um, Agatha Raisin books are, you know, great little cozy mysteries. Agatha uh, was a, I think she was in like PR or marketing and she was able to retire in like her mid fifties. And so she re retired to the Cotswolds, this tiny little town. And uh, but basically she's, her mind is too young to have retired. And so she can't seem to keep herself out of police business. And as happens in a cozy mystery, a uh, cozy little town, all these murders end up happening. And then she gets her, you know, kind of gets her nose in the business. So she is a, uh, she's an amateur detective, uh, a nosy, smart woman with too much time on her hands. Then the prompt for the dining room would be a closed circle mystery. And I am continuing on with Louise Penny's The Beautiful Mystery. This is, I think, book eight in the Armand Gamache series. And this takes place in this isolated monastery in Quebec of these very uh, exclusive and isolated group of monks. These monks specialize in Gregorian chants and they are completely isolated from the rest of the world. No one outside of their order is allowed even on the premises. So when a one of the monks ends up dead, Armand Gamache and his partner are now the only non-religious people ever to uh, ever ever to ever to step foot in this monastery and uh, now they have to solve this closed circle mystery because only the monks there could have been the murderer. This is also the first time I'm ever reading a Louise Penny book in physical form. I've always previously read them in uh, via audiobook, which I've loved. I don't know if it's because this book is just so good or it's because I'm experiencing it, reading it physically, but like the, the mounting tension and uh, just the whole mystery element of it um, feels so much more palpable in this one than I've ever experienced before. And I love these books. For the conservatory, a book with uh, nature, travel, or in a warm climate. So I don't know, this might be a little bit of a stretch. For my book club, uh, whoever has the next birthday gets to choose. We're choosing from a book, uh, a list of, uh, I think it's 100 books. It might be more than that. But it's it basically, it's a reading list from uh, the local Christian high school that a lot of the the girls in my book club, their kids go to or, or will be going to. So we're choosing off of that. And whoever's birthday is next is who cho chooses. Today is actually my birthday as I'm filming this. Um, and so one of the books that I chose is The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So I'm going to go with this one for conservatory because I think uh, like the Moors and the 
the setting, the environment is a really big part of the mystery and the atmosphere. And this, as there, there's like these big giant paw prints, and the, the people in the town are uh, think that there's like this big, this big uh, hellhound um, uh, on the loose. So those are the four books. Those are the four mystery books that I have chosen for Cloak and Dagger Christi Christmas. Uh, a book that I don't have uh, a physical copy of yet, but I think I ordered one. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have to do it on my Kindle. The other book that I chose for book club is The Confessions of St. Augustine. And part of that was kind of on the back of a uh, the, the last book that we read, or one of the last books we read, which was How the Irish Saved Civilization, which had a lot to do with ancient writings, uh, St. Augustine being one of them. Um, and so I'll be reading that. But the rest of these books I have here. So I've never read A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and I would really like to. I managed to get this uh, kind of cool leather-bound copy with um, cute end papers and uh, silver and gold foiling for $5 at Barnes & Noble uh, a little while back. So I would love to get um, to this little guy. So it's a little over like 120 pages or so. So I'll save that more toward the end of December. And then uh, my niece Holly and I, oh, I have the dust jacket off of this, but I asked my niece Holly if she would like to do a buddy read of, with me with the second book in the Tilly and the Book Wanderer series. So this is Pages and Co. Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales by Anna James. And so Holly has been, basically she's hooked on Harry Potter and anytime she tries to read anything other than Harry Potter, she's just not that interested. So she just keeps rereading Harry Potter, which... I've got no problem with that, but I thought this might be fun. Um, we both got this for Christmas last year. I think I bought it for myself and I bought it for her. And so we're gonna buddy read this together. Then I have um, a few nonfiction here. So one that I'm almost done with and that I was reading through nonfiction November is Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday is basically like a modern day Stoic. He's a student of the Sto Stoics. He's actually a marketing expert, but he has multiple books out. And in Stillness is the Key, he takes uh, hey, no bark, no bark. Gives a bunch of lessons, like each chapter is kind of a new lesson regarding stillness and pausing and quiet. And he uses real life examples from JFK and the Cuban Missile Crisis to Tiger Woods to uh, who else has there been recently? Um, Leonardo da Vinci, all sorts of great uh, historic and in current day uh, famous people that we know of. And he gives insight into their process and um, how stillness has contributed to what makes them great and then how we can apply that to our own lives. Okay, I might be at a little bit of a different angle. My mom just called um, and I'm filming on my phone. So sorry for that. Um, okay, the last two books. Um, one, I have Tom Brokaw's The Greatest... Gre Tom Brokaw's The Greatest Generation. And I want to read this because my great grandma just died. She was 98. She, as she would call herself, she was a pioneer. I probably heard that a hundred times in the last five years. Um, she was born in 1922 in Arkansas. And in 1925, at three years old, her family moved in covered wagon from Arkansas to Oklahoma. Her dad was a sharecropper. Um, I think it was his first job actually in Oklahoma. His job was basically security protection for the black farm workers against the KKK. And um, and then her dad kind of worked his way up as a sharecropper, getting bigger and bigger uh, farms and, and houses for them and everything. Um, but she lived through the Dust Bowl right there in the heart of the, uh, in the heart of, she lived through the Great Depression in the heart of the Dust Bowl. And then eventually in the, I think 1944, I wanna say, or it might've been closer to 1950. Her and my grandpa moved to uh, to LA and then they ended up in Northern California. Um, uh, but then also, so she was part of that, that greatest generation. Uh, but then also just this morning, my husband's great uncle died, Uncle Ray, and he was a first generation American. His parents were from Norway. Uh, he was an, just an amazing guy. He was, I can't remember if he was in the army or the Navy, but he fought in World War II and uh, he was 95 and he had ha just had a great Thanksgiving and uh, been with a family. He lived with his daughter and son-in-law and um, uh, he just at the breakfast table took his last breath uh, this morning. So um, just kind of tribute to Uncle Ray and to Grandpa Ru Grandma Ruby um, and 
a dying generation. Um, we're, we're losing them. And so I want to read this book. I've heard really great things about it. I believe Doris from Aldi Books has read this um, and, and really loved it. And then finally, um, at the very end of nonfiction November um, here, I started Becoming by Michelle Obama this morning. Um, I started this on audiobook. I managed to get one of those Lucky Day, uh, you know, releases from Libby. Um, so I, I started this this morning and I'm about five chapters in, I think. She is, uh, I'm at the point where she's just kind of met Barack. They've, they've been working with each other for, uh, for a little bit and their relationship is just starting to form. So this is my over ambitious December TBR. I really want to read all of these books. I will eventually get to all of them. Whether they happen in December or not, who knows, um, but I will definitely enjoy uh, those that I do get to this month. Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.